Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones 4.0. Now before we get going here, I just want to mention that this is a preview build of the mod and obviously is not currently publicly available, but you can download the current version through the link in the description. However, 4.0, which is what I'm playing on, will be available soon. I just want to get that out there real fast because obviously the mod is, is undergoing a lot of different changes as time goes on. The uh, modding team is obviously working to resolve as many bugs as possible. They're releasing it to uh, people that are going to be reporting those bugs and so on and so forth. And then once all that's, you know, settled and a lot of the uh, big-ish ones are squashed, then they're going to be putting it out to the public. So that's the point. <laughs> Just wanted to, you know touch upon that because there's been a lot of people you know asking about it and everything so I just thought hey you know what let me just mention it make sure that you know what's going on there even though to be fair I'm not part of the modding team just know that I am not part of their team at all I don't know what's going on internally I just know what I've uh, heard from you know them and, and just generally how I would think it would be done and so there you go. That's it. Anyway, we are going to probably sell all this stuff right here just because I need a little bit of cash. And also bear in mind, we did receive a thief in the previous episode. Obviously, I took the Yt Exiles castle from them. Uh, they had a, a zero gar a garrison, of course. They had literally no one there. And I have already given it away. I've already given it away to someone else because I cannot personally deal with defending a thief so incredibly far away from anything else and what we're actually planning on doing right now is a uh, caravan ambush i want to just do this real fast on the way to our um uh, to our home base basically to to our um you know to valerian lands because we are actually being attacked by Aegon himself and we want to try to maximize what we can do there. Oh yes, also I just wanted to mention I'm not entirely sure if marry anyone actually works with this uh, with this version of Bannerlord. I'm gonna actually check that after this because I did say that the only way that I would be able to marry Daenerys is with that mod enabled and so I'm thinking yeah you know what we should probably you know try it out to be honest because I think that could be a lot of fun if we can actually make that happen but obviously yeah uh, I don't know is, is it worth it is it worth me doing that I don't know maybe it is maybe it isn't because she is technically an uh, you know very independent leader of the faction she's actually going and doing things and if she joins my clan it may very well mess things up in a uh, rather fundamental way you could see how dramatically amazing this weapon is though. Ho oh, ho, I am very much enjoying using this, that is for sure. Because obviously this is that weapon that we gained in the previous episode from fighting some random Dothraki bandits or something like that. I actually have no idea, where did we get this even? Where did we get this from? I think it was a, was it a random vassal that we fought or was it someone else? I think it might have been someone else. Anyway, we are just gaining so much benefit from this weapon here and I'm extremely surprised about it to be honest I really thought that this was not going to turn out super well but it actually is surprisingly enough all right let's just level these guys up we still need more war mounts as you can see right there unfortunately I don't have a huge amount of them and of course I'm going to need to make more cash and how do I make more cash well we go into more battles we get more loot and then hope that that actually helps us out as well as obviously taking on as many tasks as we can get our hands on. I'm now up to 16,000, which is actually pretty good, surprisingly enough, because obviously um, I was down at 5,000, 6,000, and that's pretty pretty bad, you know? That is pretty bad for this point in the game because I have such a relative... I have a pretty large army considering, you know, and you don't really want to be in this kind of situation right now where you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'm going to have to scramble, you know? And that is exactly what I'm having to do here. I'm having to scramble pretty hard to be able to get to where I need to be and what I need to do. All right, so these orders are not really going to be doing much for me, and I'm also very low on stamina as it is, and that's actually something that I would love to see changed in the base game, but I don't think that's actually going to happen at any point. Um, but I would love to see 
obviously this is highly unlikely because let's face it the the developers of banner lord probably not gonna even see this or even listen to me but i would like to see the stamina for smithing regenerate at a slower rate yeah yeah okay now at a slower rate while you are moving rather than at a complete standstill because at the moment when i'm moving and not staying in a town the stamina does not go up and not regenerate at all and in my opinion i feel like that really kind of makes the player want to be as stagnant and as static as possible and it kind of limits your movement in such a significant fashion that you'd kind of think to yourself oh well this is kind of sad then isn't it because you kind of want to go places don't you you know you kind of want to go places you want to travel to like i mean let's say you're a trading character you know let's say you're a trading character and you actually want to you know uh i don't know buy some grain and sell it in some other place and you can't do that because you're attempting to do smithing at the same time and you yeah you, you just can't so it's um it's a bit it's a bit limiting in my opinion so what i'm suggesting is that when you're resting in a town the regeneration of the stamina for smithing is a lot faster but when you're uh walking around it's slower than than if you were to rest in a town you know what i mean um but I never think that it should be at zero, but obviously there are those people that are going to say, well, you know, you're resting technically when you're in the town. And, and yeah, okay, fine. You know, that, that obviously makes sense from a more realistic perspective. But I mean, just think about it. You know, if you're, if you're walking around generally, you're probably going to have a much easier time of, you know, kind of getting energy back. You know what I mean? I, I actually have to run from Daenerys here because otherwise I'm going to get outnumbered. There we go. Okay, this is a this is a little bit problematic. Oh no! Oh no no no! Don't kill me, sir. Oh oh dear, oh dear, this is bad. Let me run, let me run away. Don't get killed, don't get killed, don't get killed. Okay, there we go. Whoo! Okay, that was close. That was real close. Okay, I'm gonna get out my throwing weapons right here. Gonna see if I can use my throwing weapons against her. She doesn't have a shield. Oh no! Don't kill me. Oh. Okay, there you go. She's dead. <laughs> that was close. That was real close. Way too close for my liking, that's for sure. Okay. Oh, now I'm... Oh. Are you serious right now? Oh, this is bad. Okay, he's dead. Don't get killed. Don't get Don't get shot. Okay. Okay, are we, are we okay? No. Almost. Almost died right there. Almost died. Thanks to this person. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, I took you off your mount, sir. What are you going to do now? Ah, he is, uh, he is uh, one of our companions. That's funny. All right, there you go. We actually managed to achieve victory. Can you believe it? Wow, that was very much against the odds. And I've now eliminated every single noble companion and otherwise that were in the tournament to begin with. All right, now I need to actually focus on someone here. There we go. Okay, otherwise that would have been a two versus one and that would have been real problematic. But thankfully we seem to be okay and just need to do one more little slash there we go and that is enough okay fantastic now the main reason why of course i'm doing this is because it is a royal destrier there's a royal destrier available here and you know how fantastic those are to sell oh yes if you don't know well they're probably one of the highest highest uh, value horses in the game i think uh hmm, i don't know i might be might be uh, pulling that out of somewhere, but yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure whether that is indeed the case, but I think so. Let me actually, yeah, I mean, look at that. It's at 16,000 right here. If I sell this right here, it's going to be 16,000. I think I'm actually just going to do that straight up. Don't really see a point for me not to do that. And we might as well sell some saddles as well, just to get rid of a little bit of weight. And we also have some camels here too. I might even end up selling the camels to be fair. Um, hmm. Uh, it's actually quite funny because what happened was um, my breeder skill um, that I took in a previous episode, it has a 1% chance, if you don't know what it does, it has a 1% chance of um, breeding an animal that is in your inventory and creating multiples of that. And that's the reason why I have three of these camels instead of just one, because it actually enabled me to get two additional camels. And that actually kind of makes me think that maybe what I should do is just keep these camels in my inventory for the moment because what's going to happen then is it has a higher chance of selecting the camel 
to replicate, if you know what I mean, or to duplicate. Um, and I could also do the same thing with the Royal Destriers, potentially. Obviously, this is very much luck-based, I would assume. But let's just try it out, shall we? Let's just try it out and see whether that actually, um, you know, maybe it's going to work, maybe it's not going to work. I don't know, but... Yeah, anyway, we were able to achieve victory there. 17,000 is our award. We're back up to 34,000, and we still have that wood workshop mm, uh, constructed, which is actually quite nice. Not sure how much it's actually giving us, unfortunately. That is the um, <laughs> that is the main problem. Aegon has just gotten himself taken prisoner as well. These war mounts are, once more, extremely expensive, so we won't be able to do anything with them. Which is sad enough as it is. Oh yeah, I should also recruit some more people because I do have the ability to do that. You know, I've got a lot of space in my army. I have 157, uh, you know, spaces and capacity, which is actually kind of incredible. And here we go. We're now back here. So let's see if we can find any... Aha! Lizana is here. Okay, let's see if we can do battle. Let's see if we can actually catch up. <sighs> okay, fine, fine. We're apparently not able to catch up with Lisana here. Okay, well, you better not. Oh, you, yeah. Now, now they're just now they're just making themselves out to be a huge pain, aren't they? Because these uh, this army from Jorah there is attempting to <laughs> chase her down, which is obviously not going to work because we obviously just attempted to do that. And if we can't catch up, then certainly he cannot. But there you go. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so let's see what I can do here. Let's see if I can just murder Mr. Garen here. He's wearing my old helmet, by the way. He looks absolutely hilarious in his Dothraki armor. Because let's face it, you know, he's obviously supposed to have something a little bit better at this point, potentially. Although the Dothraki armor is actually pretty good. You know, it's okay. But it just looks a bit funny, considering he's in a full helmet now. Because you know that ridged helmet that I got from the previous episode? It actually provides me with a significant amount more protection. Actually, just one. But it's still better than what I was wearing. And it's kind of weird. So, yeah, because I wouldn't have expected that in a million years. Grey Worm is going to be annoying, as you can quite clearly tell. Uh, he has, what is it, 280 in one-handed, so highly unlikely I'm going to be able to achieve victory against him. As you can see, he's just absolutely murdering me. Oh, hello. Uh, I got him off rhythm there. That was nice. Okay, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try shield bash because here's the funny thing. A lot of people have been saying to me, "Hey, you should use shield bash in tournaments more." Okay, so now here's the thing. That is generally what I tend to do anyway. I always tend to use the shield bash, but it never really works for me, which is real sad. Not sure why, but it just fails to make an impact if you know what I mean, because I'm literally using it against the guy and he's just recovering before I can even hit him. So for example, as, as you see here, if I do another shield bash and you can see he just, he just blocks it. There's basically no point. It does two damage and that's it. The only thing I could think as to why maybe it's better for some of you is because you take the stun. Maybe you take the, uh, the increased stun duration for the bash. That might very well be the case, because I wouldn't be surprised if, if that would actually make a pretty significant difference, because 50% longer stun duration probably would give me enough time to do some damage, potentially. So, yeah, that might be something for me in the future. Maybe I can respec. I don't know, but there you go. We were able to achieve victory there against the odds, because let's face it, he was an absolute monster there. He had so many really, really nice hits on us. Okay, I've got to be careful here. Kind of want to just uh, allow my AI friend to do damage to the Dothraki here. Oh, wow. Okay, he's doing massive damage. Okay, I'm very surprised. Whoa, okay. A Valyrian Bowman was literally just able to murder both of those guys super easily. And now we're up against the Valyrian Bowman. So this is going to be a bit problematic, isn't it? Oh, no. Or maybe it's going to be the easiest... Okay, never mind. It was the easiest round I've ever had in the history of... Well, this episode. So yes, anyway, there we go. <laughs> we were able to gain something, well, quite nice, actually. That's a, a pretty nice um, mace, I believe. I think I've used that in the past a little bit, at least. And um, yeah, I'm still, as you can see, at eight smithing stamina. So very, very sad indeed. Now, let me see here. Are they actually going to attempt to besiege Illyria? Because the reason why I came back here is so that I could participate in some of these vassal battles. And, oh, hello. Lizana is actually outside. Okay. 
We're going to have to do something about her. So I'm thinking we're going to attack. We are moving much, much faster. Oh, and we can actually help one of our people. This is really funny, though. Did you see how many units she lost in such a short span of time? That must mean that this guy, Jokin, was using a very high-tier army, albeit using um, very few units. So maybe that was what was going on there. Anyway, as you can see, this is going to be super simple. I don't need to worry about this at all. I can pretty much just charge straight on it. Hmm. Yes. No, I, it seems I cannot charge straight on in because apparently they have a massive amount of pikes and uh, pole arms and so on and so forth. That really made a huge difference to their overall ability to defend against a cavalry person, which is exactly what I was. So yeah, that's not really helping, is it? Oh well, never mind. Guess I can just do some damage on foot, which is actually kind of amazing with this weapon. Doesn't seem particularly bad. There we go. 90, 96 damage. Not terrible. Not terrible. I'm actually kind of surprised and, and pretty happily surprised about the result of that. But um, yeah, not about my horse dying, of course, because that's pretty sad. Because let's face it, I, I, I think it is still alive. That's the point. I think it is still alive, but it's definitely not going to be... Um, I mean, it's going to be... Is it lame? No, no, it's not lame. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very nice indeed. So let's actually do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this armor to Garen. There we go. He finally looks a little bit better now, doesn't he? And now we can just equip everyone else with things. I'm wondering whether, whether anyone is going to be using the Dothraki armor. No, no one is wanting to use the Dothraki armor. Okay, that's interesting. Right. Perfectly fine then for me. And who's this? Oh! <gasps> Aegon himself. Hello there, Aegon himself. That is your name? Yes. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually catch up to him. Do you think I can catch up to him? 4.7? He's moving at 5.1. No, not in a million years, actually. Um, can I level up some people? Yes, I can. Okay, so... Let's actually get these guys leveled up. Uh, more uh, mounted units. Very nice. More mounted units. Very nice. And there we have it. Okay. Hopefully, is that going to give me the speed that I need? No, it isn't. But we do have the opportunity to corner him. This is a bit strange. I'm not sure why he came over in this direction, but apparently he uh, he's now cornered himself. Look at what a wonderful location we're on here. This is actually kind of crazy. Look at this. This looks fantastic. So incredibly picturesque. But um, yeah, um, strategically and tactically, I highly doubt any commander would have led their forces into an actual oasis to uh, hold position. Oh, well, never mind. You know, spawning there. Pff, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. Didn't seem to really affect our movement speed too badly. But yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, let me see if I can actually eliminate this guy with my wonderful, wonderful weapon. I mean, this is, this is just fantastic. I mean, it, it only did 7 damage, unfortunately, but it does have the potential to do much, much more than that. So let's hope that I can actually do something here. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. The, that's the kind of damage that you can see from this weapon consistently. Look at that. I'm literally doing above 100 every single time I slash with this thing. Well, not every single time, but most of the time. Not bad, I gotta say. Not bad at all. I actually do want to go back to a pole arm, by the way, and I do want to purchase one of those glaives as well, because for me personally, I find using a pole arm very, very fun. And while this weapon is actually really good, it's probably not something that I would want to use the entirety of the of the series, because while it is fun to use, it's maybe not my preference so much, because as you know, I don't really like the one-handed stance on a mount. It's not anything to do with the mod or anything like that. It's just the way that they changed how mounted combat works in Bannerlord in comparison to Warband. But that's, you know, that's neither here nor there, to be honest, is it? Anyway, there we go. We were able to achieve victory against Mr. Aegon himself, indeed. You know, second name himself, first name Aegon. And uh, I'm actually wondering, should we should we just let him go? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I guess I'll just continue to let him go. I, I don't know, because letting him go does give us more charm skill, right? I think so. I think it does give us more charm skill, which I'm, I'm kind of looking for right here. So, you know, pretty happy to do that. And we are going to gain relation with the second sons for some reason. Not sure why that's happening, but okay. And did we actually level up any, any more people? No, we didn't. But we did gain... Ooh, we got 52 prisoners. That's the reason why we were moving slowly, I assume. Ah, look, and there is actually a siege going on. Fantastic. 
Rebels in Tyrosh have risen against their lord. Okay, so yeah, obviously Tyrosh was eliminated beforehand. And, ah, the garrison has no longer any, um, any food. That's what people uh, said to me in, the, in the, one of the previous episodes when I was saying, how are they all wounded, you know? That seems super weird to me, but apparently that's, uh, that's what happens now because um, beforehand, I'm not sure when this was fixed or when this was changed or something like that, but beforehand, whenever you would starve the garrison out, it wouldn't actually do anything it wouldn't actually affect the garrison in any meaningful way. And I assume the developers of Bannerlord have actually changed that to make it be right. impactful. So I think that's actually really cool. Oh, what are your terms? Oh, wait, wait a minute. We shall meet one-on-one -on -one before our armies clash in battle. I think not. Are you serious? She actually declined to duel me? Okay. And you, you may think me saying that is kind of like, well, you, you declined to duel such an amazing warrior. No, no, I, I'm saying that because it's me, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'm very surprised that she wouldn't take the opportunity to eliminate someone of such inept skill, shall we say. You know, because that's, that's obviously what's going on there. You know, it's kind of a bit strange. Anyway, we can uh, just uh, take this opportunity to use our bow a little. Maybe we can do some damage. Nice little headshot there. Unfortunately, not a kill. But hopefully I can get a little bit more and maybe get a little bit luckier here as well. Nice little neck shot there as well. And maybe we can do some damage with this too. I'm kind of hoping to get maybe um, maybe around... I don't even know what my what my skill is at right now with one-handed, but I was, I was kind of hoping to get around 125 to maybe 150 in one-handed unless there is another perk that I really want to get. Oh, we actually eliminated the enemy's enemy vassal. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, yeah. One thing that I really do need to contemplate in the future is when I create a character, I should really take a look. And this is obviously going much further into the realm of min-max than otherwise I would normally do. You know, because usually what I do is I just do what feels good at the time. So if I think, hey, you know what? I kind of want to use a two-handed weapon. So I'm just going to spec into two-handed. I'm not going to look and see what kinds of perks I can get and what kinds of perks are going to be accessible to, accessible to me in those situations. Because there's obviously a lot of different opportunity for um, some of the one-handed perks specifically to actually make a huge difference to how effective you are with a two-handed weapon. And you may think, well, why is that? Well, it's mostly due to movement speed, obviously, but let's face it, if you're on a, two, you know, if you're on a mount, then it's not really going to make any difference whatsoever anyway. But I, I digress. It doesn't matter too much. What I'm trying to say is I never look at the perks before I actually create a character. And I think what I'm going to do is in the future, I will probably change that. And I will probably look and see what kind of perks I can get before we actually begin the series. Because if I do that, then we're going to have the opportunity to kind of decide, hey, I want to get I don't know. Let me see here. Let's say, like, for example, I have I have three points in focus um, for one-handed right now and five vigor. It's pretty easy to get to five vigor um, and pretty easy to get to three focus points. So let's say that I want to get to around 150 one-handed. I think I can probably make it to 150 one-handed with three focus points and five in vigor. Um, but let's say that I want one of these perks, right? So then I'm going to say, okay, I need exactly three focus points and five vigor to be able to make it to this point. That's what I'm trying to impart to you right now. So in other words, let's say that I only want to get to, I don't know, 225 in smithing. So then I need to spec exactly the right amount of focus points in those things to be able to make it to that point. And so, as I say, it is very much taking it to the next level of, of min-max than what I'm used to, because I generally don't I don't know, I generally don't care about that kind of stuff because I, I generally just like to have fun and just try and see what I can do. And I mean, you can see here, like for example, my medicine skill is at, is 25 and that's all I really wanted to get. So I only needed one focus point to be able to get there. I technically don't need to spec any more points in intelligence or anything. So that's actually really nice too. And otherwise we can do something here with our perks. I think I'm probably gonna go for the plus 30% speed bonus while on foot. Because charge damage isn't really a big deal to me. So I'm going to go for Surging Blow. We also have larger shield protection, which I am probably going to be having because shield wall is, in my opinion, not that useful. And I'm also thinking now that maybe what we'll do 
Uh, I think we'll go for maybe more riding skill, or should we go for more athletics? Hmm, that is indeed the issue. Yeah, that is indeed the issue. Oh yeah, I think, by the way, that might have been a typo with the charm skill, because as you can see right here, it says plus one influence per day for every skill point above 200 charm. We've had this charm, uh, charm skill perk before, and they haven't fixed it yet. So I'm not sure, um, maybe they have fixed it in some of the future versions, because I am playing on a, a version of the game that is a little bit behind where they're currently at. So maybe they have already fixed this, and my complaints are just absolutely useless and pointless right now. But this used to give me 75, or uh, not, not, not 75, 7.5. Um, when I had it. So I'm going to assume, or it gave me like five or something like that. So I'm going to assume that it gives you one influence point for every 10 skill points, because that's exactly what this riding skill perk actually provides as well. It says plus one charge damage and maneuvering for every 10 skill points above 200. So in essence, that's giving you seven when you first get it at 275. So it's giving you seven additional charge damage and maneuvering, which in my opinion, I don't really know whether that's that good, to be honest. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably just try to maximize our survivability. And obviously when we get into a siege or when we get into a field battle and I'm knocked off my mount or something like that, then we're obviously going to um, maybe have the ability to survive a little bit longer. And I might actually think to myself about getting some more endurance here. Not sure if I want to go for bows right now. Bows seem okay, but... I don't know whether I need to go for more of it. I mean, we've got four focus points in it already. Our learning rate is at 8.25, which is kind of decent. So I think I'm just going to go for another point in endurance here. My charm skill is also doing absolutely fine. And as I've said, I kind of just want charm skill for later on when we actually start looking for a spouse. So hopefully that's going to work out for us quite nicely. Did I sell all my people? Yes, I did. There is a caravan ambush right here, so I might as well go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, and also I wanted to check to see how much money my... Oh, wow. Okay. This is... Uh... <laughs> this is real bad. This is real bad. Look at how much money it's making. I spent 26000 on this wood workshop. Can I manage it in some way? I can change it to something else. Okay, so wait. There's no other brewery. Okay, so so let, let's, let me let me just let me just very quickly do this real quick real quick before we do the uh, the caravan ambush mission because I want to see if we can maximize the profit from this a little bit more effectively. So wait a minute. So it's cohort right over here, and they have well nothing else in range. Uh, they do have a grain village. Oh, that is actually uh, is that tied to. No, it is not tied to Kohor over there. Okay, that, that is a bit of a problem. That is a bit of a problem. I think we're going to go for a brewery, actually. We're going to go for a brewery, and we're going to see how that goes. Maybe it's going to be fantastic. Maybe it's going to be absolutely awful, but it can't be worse than plus 15. Right? Surely it can't be worse than plus 15. So we will go for a brewery here. Um... Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else. Is it just me, or would you also love to have an armorer? Would you love to have an armorer and actually go into your smithing and do the armor yourself, creating your very own armor? Is it just me that wants that? I oh, know, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that want that, right? Anyway, we're going to just change this. It's going to cost me 2,000, which is absolutely fine. We're just going to hope that the brewery does a little bit better, even though there are... So That's the point. There are so many wood workshops in that town that that is the entire reason why the prices are so incredibly low and we're getting so little profit because it's just not worth it, you know? Anyway, uh, yeah, we need to stay a bit further away, and there are the pirates that we're inevitably going to attack. Uh, vote for the new owner. Can I vote for myself? Oh, yes, I can, but Jora is actually... Um, ah, sad. I was really hoping that we would actually gain the ownership over this, because a town, owning a town is absolutely incredible. It would really be fantastic, but... Unfortunately, that is not to be, not this time around at least. Maybe, just maybe, if I'm able to um, besiege this other place over here, Tolos, we might very well get the ability to get that, possibly. I don't know. It would be cool, but who knows? Is it highly unlikely? Yeah, probably, but 
We can hope, okay? We can hope. That's that's all I'm really wondering, whether we can maybe get that. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so yeah, let's just charge straight on in. There's not really any need for us to use any strategy here, as they are indeed just mounted ransackers and pillagers and so on. And we have, of course, eliminated a bunch of vassals already. Oh yeah, we should probably just get out my one-handed. We're probably going to be a lot more effective with that, he says, as he just gloriously misses one of them. Yeah, it's also got a thrusting attack. That's that's something you've got to watch out for. If you decide to use this weapon as well, you just have to watch out for the thrusting attack because it is very low piercing damage. Could be useful, I guess, against an armor target, but um, yeah, most of the time you want to use the slashing one. Of course, I mean, look at that. We just do so much damage with this thing. Well, it seems like he's going to get away, that's for sure. Oh, well, never mind. There you go. We did get 5.6 for now. We earned 99% of the loot. Okay, that's pretty funny. And we also got a massive amount of prisoners. So you know what I'm going to say next. Yeah, uh, that, that um, you know what? That's become a bit too predictable, so I'm not going to say anything, okay? That's it. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to say, I'm going to just... Go over here. Yes, I'm going to go over here and do nothing much at all. There is actually a tournament going on at Tolos. Uh, the food is actually really, really low. So I'm actually wondering if I begin the siege, can I win this by just eliminating the militia? I don't know, actually. I I think, you know what? Let's. Shall we try it? I actually want to see whether this works, okay? I want to see whether this works, because they have three days' worth of food remaining. I'm not really going to do much. I'm literally just going to starve them out a little bit and see if we can inflict a little bit of um, uh, starvation casualties or whatever and see whether they um, get knocked out. Because if they do get knocked out, then we may very well get the opportunity to just go straight on in. I'm not going to build anything either. I think I will build maybe a battering ram and maybe a siege tower, but that's pretty much it. We are leveling my engineering now as well, which is absolutely pointless, obviously, as you can tell. Um, I mean, I technically should have specced into engineering if I wanted to with that focus point that I had, but as I said, I'd, I have such a small amount of intelligence as it is is he really joining me? Are you serious, sir? Wow, that's actually super funny. But yeah, look at this. They are now starving. As you can see, they have no food and they are now getting knocked unconscious. So that's really nice. So that means that they have fixed that issue because as I said to you before in this episode, um, I, I said that it didn't work. Basically, whenever I would starve a particular thief out, it wouldn't actually decrease the enemy's garrison in a significant enough fashion and so it would basically be like oh they lost 10 units in you know five days or something and it would just be really really harsh so thankfully enough they only have militia remaining i think i'm going to build one more siege tower just because then we have all that we need to potentially get over there i'm not going to build any trebuchets or anything like that i don't see the point in it and um oh i'm, I'm apparently not in command of the siege as you can see, it says, you're not in command of this siege. So I assume that the other fellows want us to... Um, do, do you want me to actually build trebuchets, sir, or what? Uh, maybe it's actually going to be faster for me to build these things now that we have some people joining us, actually. So maybe it's a good idea that I do this. Okay, let's try it out then. Okay, here we go, there we go. Yeah, let me just make sure that that, that, get, that gets paused and everything. Maybe we can even take down the walls. Do you think we can actually take down the walls? Because this is definitely going to be an elimination. This is a complete elimination if we can do that. There we go. So let's just put all these little things out here. And there we have it. Okay, so let's see if we can actually eliminate the walls. I mean, this is going to be pretty easy. If, if we can actually do that, then this is going to be so incredibly simple. Oh, I'm surprised that the guy is actually allowing us to destroy the walls. Are you... Is he serious right now? He's not actually allowing us to go in. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Can you... Uh, do I... 
he's he's the he's the leader as you can see Jora Mormont is commanding the besiegers okay that's um ah there we go he's no he's not stopped he's actually just okay he's he's just moved on because apparently his army has now um just completely disintegrated no we don't want to make peace with them are you serious now no 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 we do not want to make peace if I leave now that is gonna completely remove all of my oh are you joking ah uh, you know I couldn't actually go in that's the funny thing I literally could not go in and look at them look at this they literally made peace with them just as we were about to eliminate their last thief Ah, I, I don't, you know what? I don't even know. I don't even know what to tell you at this point, because literally, I thought to myself, me starting the siege is going to enable me to be the commander for the foreseeable future. In other words, for that nearby siege, I thought to myself, yeah, I'm easily going to be able to, uh, you know, tell people to go in when we want them to go in at the opportune moment. But lo and behold, that is actually not what happened. No, they took command because obviously they are slightly higher ranked i assume maybe he's the marshal or maybe uh you know he has a well it's pretty obvious that he's a higher ranking vassal of course mr jora mormont and uh yeah he took command and that's exactly what's happened now yeah that is exactly what's happened okay so yeah we should probably just stop on by to get some food because we are actually now having to slaughter some animals and i don't really like doing that at the best of times because it feels like a really um I don't know, it, it feels like an, uh, what is it now? Unreliable, that's it. feels like an unreliable way to do that. I always prefer to have something in reserve just in case something happens. And so having some animals in, in reserve is definitely going to make sense. Anyway, let's just sell a couple of things here. Just sell some of this stuff that we don't otherwise need. And then we can buy some fish. Let's just get, I don't know, let's get 100 fish and let's get this, some beer, and then we're absolutely fine, 195. Don't think that's enough, but it should be enough for what we want. And there is another caravan ambush going on here, and I think I am going to be doing that. But for now, I think that's going to be it for this episode. And next time around, we're hopefully going to be able to eliminate um, Aegon's house once and for all. And then maybe we'll be able to declare war against Volantis or some, somewhere else. I think that would be really, really fun. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.